Okay, so today we're gonna to be harvesting pomegranates. That's up next. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to you today. It is the end of November, 2019. So Lori and I wanted to take a couple of chances here while we still have the old property to show you guys a couple of harvests um, as well as kind of give an update on the property itself. I know a lot of you have been asking kind of what's going on over here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to talk today about one of our favorite fall fruits, that's pomegranates. So now we've talked about pomegranates before. I'll link one of the videos here, um, in fact, this particular tree behind us here, this is our wonderful pomegranate. It's our most productive. It's also our oldest tree. So we talked a little bit about the challenges that we have with pomegranates. Now we've got several varieties here. In fact, we've got four to be specific. Um, we have fruit on, I think all of them. We'll double check here in a second. However, there's very, very little harvest. Now, the main reason why is we didn't do anything to protect the fruits this year. So that was mainly because we were in the process of moving on to the new property. So we didn't really have the time and we didn't think we were actually gonna be here for the harvest anyhow. Turns out we were. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of look at a couple different things today as we do this harvest. And we're also gonna show you a different way we're gonna try processing them this year. So first things first, let's talk a little bit about fruit. Now we've gotten a lot of fallen fruit Actually, before we moved on to the new property, I took a full wheelbarrow full of, I don't know, 100 or 200 pomegranates that had holes in them from birds and bird damage. I thought I got them all, but there's still several down here on the ground. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and pick up, got a trash can, gonna pick up all of the, uh, the fallen fruit. In addition to what's fallen, just looking up in here, I can see there's still some fruit that has bird pecks in it. In fact, here's one here pretty much turned into a birdhouse. If Lori wants to squeeze in a little bit, you'll see just the kind of damage that birds do. And they've cleaned this guy out, which I suppose at least somebody got something out of there, but that one's completely cleaned out. Got another one up here, kind of the same thing. In addition to that, we also have fruit that's completely actually ripened. So if Lori wants to squeeze back in, you can see this one. This is on our Austin pomegranate. You can see we got some ripe fruit in there that the birds haven't quite gotten to, but you can see how those explode once they're basically overripe and they just basically spill the seeds onto the ground. So that's kind of cool to see. Definitely know that these are ripe. We actually had, we came here last weekend, did a little bit of harvesting for here in the fall. We did get a couple of pomegranates off the trees and broke them open uh, right after Thanksgiving. Had beautiful ripe fruit. So got some bird damage I'm gonna definitely pick up now. Also gonna go ahead and do a harvest. So let's see what we wind up with when we're done. Okay, so that just took us a few minutes and we're done. So we'll kind of show you what we have. So first thing would be our wonderful pomegranates. Now I took at least a hundred of these off the ground and off the tree that had been damaged by birds. We've got, I don't know, maybe 15 or so. Got a couple good size ones. You can see these here. Nice big, bigger than a softball on these guys. So nice big fruit. Our Austin pomegranates, you can see they look a little bit different. These fruit actually are the second set. These are the fall setting fruit. So they don't have any bird damage on these fall sets and you can see they're starting to break open. Got some beautiful ripe seeds in there. So even though they don't necessarily look ripe, these um, do ripen up on the tree. What's great about these, um, this is that second fall set. We do get two sets of fruit, at least on our wonderful pomegranate and on our Austin pomegranate. The spring set gets completely damaged by birds. In fact, I think we got one ripe fruit from the spring set on our Austin pomegranate, but we've got a couple dozen very, very small sized fruit that set here in the fall after the birds had already left for the winter. So what's nice is these ripen up nice and fast and they do make for some fantastic pomegranates. So that second set actually makes it through just fine. You can see these guys are completely ripe breaking open. Then of course, the discard. So we've got uh, half of this trash can, so a good 10 gallons or so, maybe a little bit more, um, full of just bird damaged and rotting fruit. So that's what we had left that I missed. Um, so again, I had about a full wheelbarrow full of rotting fruit that I took out before we moved and we still have uh, quite a bit left. So we'll take this back with us. You know, probably we'll wind up composting. So at least we can start that there on the new farm compost that down with some wood chips, we should be in good shape. So here's our, our fall harvest for 2019. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take these back home with us and we wanna show you a new way that we're gonna process these this year. So let's go take a look at that. 
Okay, so here we are back at the new farm. And what I have is I have one of our wonderful pomegranates. It's a good sized pomegranate. This will be a good way of showing you the way we just learned how to get the seeds out of here. Now, this is nothing new. We definitely did not invent this. Uh, we found it on YouTube. Where else would you find it, right? Uh, but in the end, we did find that um, we felt this was the easiest way for us to deal with the handful of pomegranates that we have this year. Last year, we did decide to juice all of them. We wound up with about two and a half gallons of solid pomegranate juice. And of course, we turned that into wine. I'll link that video for you here. Uh, we did take that two and a half gallons and turn that into a pomegranate wine. And it's just about done aging at this point. It's got a couple more months to go. Looking forward to that. But one of the things that we like to do is we like to store all of our fruits in the freezer. Uh, because we have a limited number of pomegranates, we did want to go ahead and get them processed because we have a lot going on on this farm here this spring. We probably will come back and turn it into wine. We're big fans of that. Great way to store long-term store juice. But all that being said, let's go ahead and show you real quick how we get the seeds out of here for storage tools for today. Um, I'm going to have a small knife. Now we have this little bird's beak knife. These are kind of cool and actually I've only used this for a handful of things. A wooden spoon, some other type of solid spoon will work just fine. And a couple bowls. One to hold the seeds in and the other one to put your discards in. And obviously we'll be using discards giving those to the chickens. So what you want to do is you want to take the flower end of your pomegranate. So you're going to cut basically about where this starts to go down on the shoulder. I'm going to call that the shoulder. Um, of this end of the pomegranate, you'll see this kind of shoulder here where it's flat up to the flower end. And you kind of want to go along that shoulder. Now you don't want to go too deep, so I'm going to show you. You don't want to go too, too deep. You just want to basically get into the flesh, but not into the seeds. So I'm going to kind of go right around and then meet back where I started. And then you'll be able to just peel this right off really, really easy. You can see that. So now I've gotten down into there. Look at that though. Those look fantastic. So nice, fully ripe pomegranate there. I probably could have gone down a little bit further, um, but I'm going to go ahead and give this a shot. So now what you want to do is you want to actually break this into sections. So now you can see right here, this line, I want to basically follow that down. And again, not too deep. And I only want to go down about mm, maybe three quarters of the way down. And I'm going to find each one of those little shoulders and do the exact same thing. Just like that. Again, not all the way down. I know I've got a shoulder here or a little section. You can see this bird's beak follows kind of perfectly around the shape of the pomegranate. And I know for sure I have one here. And I, I may have more, but I do know for sure that's going to work. All right. So that's the start. Now, next thing, these are just going to kind of pull. I'm going to get over my bowl. These are just going to kind of pull apart. And this is the third one I've done, so definitely not an expert here, but let's get that middle core out. You can kind of see again how this is going. But you can see beautiful, beautiful, fully ripe pomegranate. A little light on those seeds. As you spin it over, I'm already starting to lose some of the seeds down here into my bowl. Now, having a nice big deep bowl is perfect for this because you don't want any splatter. What you're going to do is you're going to basically take your spoon, hold this as best you can, and then you're going to spank the pomegranate. Oh, I lost a corner there. All right, I got pieces coming off into there. And this is definitely live TV because he was supposed to stay on there. All right, back over to here, same thing. Just smack that. And the seeds will come out. Already threw one onto the ground. And again. And then the middle. Okay. So I got a few bits and pieces of that kind of pith that you have around the seeds itself. So we get those out of here. Those will go into the chickens because there's still a few seeds for them to kind of get into. Hit these a couple more times. And you can see I've got the majority of the seeds are out of there. Kind of just 
sucks them right out of there. It's actually kind of cool. And you still got all that kind of pith. Now for me, we've got chickens. Our chickens love these seeds. I got a couple more I'm saving for us, but I don't mind leaving them a couple little gems. I got one more arm. Okay, you can see, got a couple more small seeds in there, but for the most part, I'm good to go. We've got a handful of those small little aerials that are still in here. We're gonna go ahead and give those to the chickens. We'll put them in that chicken composting bin you guys saw us build. I'll link it for, for you here if you haven't. Uh, but we'll put those in there, let the chickens go to town and leave the rest of those scraps in those compost bins. You can see the harvest that we got out of that one piece of fruit. Good amount of seeds here. A little pith thing there. We got a good amount of seeds here. Now what we'll do with these is you can eat them fresh. They would taste great. Um, you can also store them in the fridge. What's great about pomegranates is they do have a very, very good shelf life. So you could just put them up on the shelf. In fact, that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna keep them in that bucket probably for the next week or so. Take our time to go through and do this maybe every evening, have something for Lori and I do together, which is processing our pomegranates. We're gonna put these into gallon freezer storage bags, those Ziploc bags. We'll store these until sometime in the spring when we have a chance to come back around and turn them into more pomegranate wine. But ultimately, we wanted to see what we do with our pomegranates and our pomegranate harvest for this year. You know, as disappointing as it was, one thing I can tell you, we still did get a pretty decent harvest, even not really dealing with them much. The chickens have really enjoyed the bird eaten or bird damaged fruit because they're of course birds, so they've been chowing down on that. So it is a good alternate ch uh, chicken feed source, so we do like it for that. And of course, we still do get a harvest. So I get the feeling we probably will still have pomegranates here on this farm as well. So just want to thank you for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. Instagram and Facebook, we post content there you won't see here on the YouTube channel. Questions or comments, leave those in the comment section down below. And our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link down in the description. That is a free painless way to help support the channel. If you start with that link, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. So we just want to thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you.